I'm Richard Coulter, head of the Fujitsu Network Business Marketing Team, and I'm here with Dr. Solomon Ashrafi, our head of 5G system integration. Solomon's had over 30 years experience in deploying wireless networks and building wireless networks as a carrier, as a vendor, and as an equity investor. And he's here to talk to us about 5G system integration, its challenges, what models we're seeing in the network, uh, because it's an important topic uh, related to ORAN. So welcome, Solomon. We're glad to have you here to hear about this important topic. Thank you, Rich. So maybe let's jump into the, our first question. Um, as we mentioned, you have a 30-year history of developing, integrating, and deploying wireless networks. Can we first start, though, with a definition? What is systems integration in the context of 5G networks? Okay, so in the, in the context of 5G RAM, um, the first integration happens in the front hall. Uh, in the old days, uh, the base station was a monolithic, vertically integrated solution, where you had the baseband unit as well as the radio unit all in one, you know, uh, uh, one integrated uh, unit. And what happened is that over the years, especially when I was uh, launching Metro PCS Network, I asked my vendors to separate the BBU from the radio unit. And that interface is the front hall. So in the context of 5G, especially with ORAN, uh, the disaggregation goes further, where you would disaggregate even the BBU unit to two uh, separate components, the distribution unit and the uh, centralized unit, the CU and the DU. So the, in terms of definition of system integration, when you deploy networks, you want to make sure that the interfaces work, the nodes function independently, and the whole system would work together. Fantastic. Thank you for that definition. Now that we have a, a better understanding of what SI is, can you walk us through how integration is changing with OpenRAN and the benefits for mobile network operators? Absolutely. Um, so. In the open RAN, <clears throat> as I indicated, what happens is that you disaggregate further the BBU to distribution unit and the centralized unit. The distribution unit has all of the uh, scrambling, modulation, coding, layer mapping on the downlink. And on the uplink, you have channel estimation, equalization, because if you use MIMO, you basically <clears throat> send pilots and uh, you, the base station uh, radio would basically estimate the channel and then the equalizer has to kind of undo the channel impairments to, to uh, really receive the signal. So uh, all of those functions are in the DU. Now the CU has some higher functionality, but they are separate. They could be hosted in different parts of the network Basically, the CU is closer to the core. It gets integrated to the core, the packet core, and then it is connected to the DU via the mid hall. Okay, and <clears throat> so the integration activity would be the CU and the DU with the mid hall, and then of course the front hall, which is from the DU to the radio unit. The <clears throat> the beauty of Open RAN. Um, is that the total cost of ownership for the uh, operator goes down. And the reason it goes down is because of the network effect. And what is that network effect? What it is is that for every CU, you could have multiple DUs. And for every DU, you could have multiple radios, RUs. And so that would give you the network effect. Whereas in a, in a monolithic solution where everything is vertically integrated, you have to have one CU, one DU, one radio monolithically integrated, right? Whereas over here, you could have one DU to 10 or 12 radios, and that would give you the network effect, which saves cost for the operator. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yes. All right, great. Thank you, Solomon. Now that we know what SI is, can you give us an overview of an integration project? What are the key steps and is this a one-time project? Sure. Um, so when you look at an uh, integration project, uh, the first thing that has to happen is that the operator or the customer 
has to define an IoT profile. And in that IoT profile, a lot of technical information are basically exchanged from subcarrier spacing to FFT size 2048 to if it is TDD, the configuration of the time slots, uh, carry aggregation, the bandwidth, all of these informations are put into the IoT profile and the vendors will agree to that. Once they agree, they can start the IoT activities, uh, interoperability activities. And uh, DISH is a good example. I mean, uh, uh, for DISH network, we had to integrate our radios to uh, the DU vendor, and uh, that is the front hall. And a lot of these uh, technical informations were exchanged and we had to ensure, and some of these, the test plans could be thousands of test uh, steps. And you have to make sure that every one of them pass. Yeah, absolutely. So, so now that you've gone through this thousand test long project, is that it? Are you done or what happens next? Well, what happens next is that you have to ensure that the performance of the network is there, okay? When you look at the performance of a wireless network, you have uh, key performance indicators like accessibility, retainability, integrity, uh, and, and these have KPIs like integrity has throughput at the cell edge, the downlink throughput, uplink throughput, a user throughput, cell throughput, all of these are KPIs that you have to ensure that you can, you can achieve them and sustain them. That's after the system integration, that's the performance of the network. But however, what happens is that in some cases, uh, uh, <coughs> depending on the vendor, uh, I have seen vendors who have built really great capability features like dual connectivity, carrier aggregation, massive MIMO and all these things, but their operationality features are not quite there. And what I'm talking about is is stability, is scalability, observability, maintainability, security. Some of these things may not be there. And, and, and what happens is that even after system integration is finished, if these operationality features are not there, the system is gonna fail, right? right. Because those are, the good thing about Fujitsu is, is that since we have been around since 1935, um, we have been paying a lot of attention to quality of the products. And, and uh, that, that is also related to Japanese culture, quality. And so our products do not only have capability features, but operationality features. They are stable, reliable, uh, quality products. And that's key to ensure that after system integration, the network is operating properly. Yeah, absolutely. I know, I know that's one of the, the things we're really well known for is making sure things work in the field. And I know, at least from my experience in other parts of the network, that once it gets to the field, you know, there are things like software upgrades and changes and things like that. Does that come into play when, when you're talking about an ORAN network that's integrated too? Does that pose challenges at all? Uh, absolutely, uh, because in a multi-vendor environment, uh, what happens is that every vendor would have different versions of their products as they evolve their products. And so from time to time, you have to kind of ensure that this version from this vendor would work with this version from another vendor. But, but that is uh, routinely done and uh, the, the uh, vendors collaborate to ensure that their products uh, still uh, hook together and uh, are plug and play. So not just in that initial integration, but as the products evolve over time as that's well. That's right. That, that's fantastic. Yeah. But that is not a big challenge. It is something that is routine, uh, routinely done. Thanks for that great example of the, the dish integration. I want to know if you've seen other models with different carriers that are either deploying RAN now or planning to deploy, you know, how they're approaching system integration. Is it the same way as dishes? Yeah, well, I mean, there are different models. For example, some of the models are totally vendor driven. And the, and the reason is that some of the vendors want to make sure that their equipment would integrate to other uh, equipment because in an ORAN uh, scenario, uh, the operator may, may select multi uh, vendor solution, multiple vendors in the, in the network. 
And uh, each of those uh, participants have to make sure that they can integrate to other vendors because they don't know uh, who the operator is going to select, right? Right. So, so that's one model. The other model is that the uh, uh, operator may select one vendor to be the integrator of the choice. Um, for example, uh, in some cases, uh, Fujitsu could be uh, selected as the vendor of the choice for the total system integration, even though they have one component of the solution. In some cases, it could be other vendors selected for that. And in some cases, it could be none. It, it would be a totally third party neutral uh, uh, involved in system integration. So there are different models. Right. Yeah. Yeah, great. Thanks for that. So maybe we could jump now from you know, what's the model in the industry to what are we doing here at Fujitsu? What, what is your team doing uh, with uh, system integration? What are the examples that you can share of projects that we've done? Mm -hmm. uh, and and um, maybe you can walk us through that. Yeah, so uh, obviously I cannot mention names of uh, vendors um, and operators here because a lot of these things are under NDA. But I can tell you that uh, at Fujitsu, we have labs where we have uh, different vendor products in our lab and uh, we have performed integration to them. Um, and uh, when the operator would ask for it, uh, we have done the legwork, <laughs> uh, so to speak. And, and uh, a lot of those uh, activities have been previously performed so that we can, we can uh, go ahead to the next step. So uh, at Fujitsu, we have integrated to uh, different DUs. Um, we have worked with different operators in different models uh, so that uh, we can do this. And we have different components from the packet core to, to uh, the DU to the CU. And then even we have been involved in some competitor product where we have taken somebody else's radio and integrated to the system because we are always looking for the what is best for the customer. If the customer decides to choose a different product, we still can be involved in system integration activities. Yeah, it's fantastic. And that, that's a common trend across the, the services team is that we yes. do a lot of work for third party vendors. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's amazing. So throughout that, the programs that you've run through, I, I think you've shared with me that there are some common, ch common challenges that are associated with integrating open RAN systems. I, I hope you could walk us through some of the challenges that you've seen, some of the, the biggest challenges that you're concerned about. Well, uh, I think uh, the biggest challenge, uh, I tell you, the uh, physical interfaces are open based on the standards. But sometimes uh, we have seen some vendors um, the human interfaces are actually not that open. <laughs> and so what, uh, what is required is for the operator to ensure that all of the vendors work together. Uh, and, and that's uh, really normal because what, what is happening is that uh, each of these uh, vendors, even though they are collaborating, they're also competing. So there's a, a competition between them, right? And so what you don't want to happen in the open RAN scenario is that one vendor decides to kind of uh, use delay tactics to, to, to position their product ahead of the other vendor and so forth. And that's not good for the operator or the industry. So what we want to do is we want to have an environment where every vendor, vendor in the IoT or system integration activity are proactively collaborating uh, in the IoT activity and not always looking for the operator to force the issue. Okay, they're always proactively collaborating and there are ways to solve that. I mean, there's possibility because a lot of these IoT activities uh, happen with using uh, some JIRA ticketing process. Uh, imagine you have the number of tickets that needs to be closed uh, how long it would take for them to close, and the severity and the importance of a particular JIRA that could be an input from the operator. And, and the way that the average of these can produce some sort of an index, uh, and, and that could be visible to the operator and the entire ecosystem, so that it shows 
uh, which vendors are actually collaborating and totally open and trying to work towards the, uh, what is best for the operator. And uh, so that is one of the challenges. The other challenge is that as uh, the vendors uh, try to evolve their products, you could get to a point where you have to ensure that now this version of this vendor would work with uh, our product or you know, even though system integration has happened before, but the version of the products change and you gotta make sure that they, 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 they work together. So that's another challenge. Yeah. But, but these are all challenges that are pretty well known and uh, uh, vendors collaborate to fix them. Yeah, that's fantastic. Sure. Well, thank you, Solomon, for coming in and sharing your thoughts on, on system integration, what's happening in the market. It's a really exciting and interesting topic that we know is really timely with Open RAN being so important for the, the broader 5G ecosystem. So thank you again for Absolutely. coming. Absolutely. Thank you so much.